Brilliant. Okay. Um, yeah. So I've, I've come here this evening to talk about rod licenses. And as you see from the title of the talk, why are they going up? It's obviously a bit of a, an emotive subject. Um, rod licenses, the, the way they are, is, um, they are they are going up and they have gone up from the 1st of April. I'll cover that in a bit more detail. Um, what I wanted to talk to tonight about is basically the rod licenses system, the income that we get and what we actually spend it on. And then just go into a bit of a reason by why they are going up. So um, that's me, gave a bit of an introduction. People sometimes show me, show them a fish, get them on side. Um, I do go fishing for my sins. I'd like to think I know a bit about angling and the, the gripes that some of the anglers out there might have and hopefully try and answer some of those questions around that, that people might have tonight. But as I said, the, what we do in our team, we, we are the people that divvy out the rod license money basically. And with that also, we do stuff like marketing the rod license. It's very much sort of catch-22. We want more, more people to go fishing, not only just because it's a great sport and all the health and well-being benefits that come from it, but there's a bit of a mercenary thing there, of course. If we get people to go fishing and buy a licence, it's more money for us to invest into the fishery service, which I'm going to talk about a bit about tonight. So I'm going to try and cover two questions tonight. Um, what actually is the rod licence income spent on? Um, many of you on the call might already have a, an idea of that. Some of you might not be too sure. I sometimes think we're not brilliant at sometimes getting that message um, out to the public about what the actual fishing license income is spent on. Some people just think they need a license, that's it, and the money goes off somewhere into a black hole. But that money spent on the license, your license is so important to delivering so much for fisheries. So I'm going to cover that in detail, and then we're going to come on to the bit of the title of the talk, why are the rod license prices going up? It's a, it's a bit of a tough question. Um, and a bit of a tough answer to give, but hopefully you'll get a feel for why we've had to do it. And the, the main reason we're doing it is to try and protect and improve and maintain fisheries, fisheries and fishing. So hopefully you get a feel for why we are doing that. So um, what actually is rod license income spent on? Um, before I go into the detail of that, I just thought I'd give you a bit of a, a boring blurb about what the EA Fisheries Survey services there for and to do so we have a statutory duty as set out by the environment act 95 to actually maintain improve and develop migratory and freshwater fisheries that's what we're charged with government to do and that's what we have to do and within those sort of things we have all these different aspects of it so what you might expect to conserve and maintain freshwater migratory fish in their environments so obviously the money which comes into that we look to improve and hopefully maintain things um, we also want the way fisheries to make a contribution to the economy. You probably know how much you have spend on fishing and whether it's going on holiday fishing, buying tackle, that there's a huge economy around the whole of fishing. The, the latest survey that was done a few years ago reckons that fishing probably throws in about 1.5 billion into the economy and it probably employs directly indirectly 30,000 people. So it's it's no small service. I mean, obviously it's a it's a huge pastime, but the, the, the numbers behind it economically are huge. So we have to do that. And of course, within that, there's particularly like remote, rem, remote rural areas and coastal areas where there's low level incomes, where fishing can be really important to generate economic need and benefit. And lastly, it's basically to enhance the social value of fishing and make it widely available as many as we can because it's recognized it's a healthy form of recreation um i think for many we, who go fishing might well know that there's a lot of health and well-being benefits derived from fishing and what with the probably mental health um, pandemic we're now seeing as a result of the pandemic it's we we really want people to experience this because we really believe that it is a great way to be outside in the great out nature and you know really experience those health and well-being benefits so how is this work funded um not a trick question it's rod license money all what i've talked about and what we need to do this can only be enacted by people going fishing and buying a rod license so there's all that money which is plowed back into the fishery service to do all those things a um, couple of important points to notice here um so rod license income is invested directly back into fishing and fisheries. It doesn't go off to fund any other things like that. It is mainly to drive forward the service for the benefit of the customers. And within that, all the income from fishing licenses is entirely ring fenced to fisheries work. I think it's really important to get that across. Um, so what does it fund? There's, there are lots of different things. Um, some of those behind the scenes, which we 
we're going to talk about uh, we already mentioned the administering the, the selling of fishing licenses but direct customer facing benefits all those things there like improving fish stocks um, creating opportunities for anglers improving fisheries fisheries enforcement um, improving rivers lakes and store, still waters through habitat improvement and also providing a fisheries incident response i.e going out there doing fish rescues uh, mortality investigations so that's that part of it but there's also things which probably you know we don't also talk about so much but there's a whole marketing of uh, fishing as well which you might say well that's how's that a benefit to me the benefit there is we want people to go fishing we want people to keep on fishing because of course it brings the income in so it's like you know continual circle we want people to come in to provide the income so we can carry on investing to the benefit of fish and fisheries so what doesn't it fund? I, I, I have to cover this because what with the clamour around water quality and the side of it, and yes, there, there may be some questions coming out, and I don't really want to dodge things here, but what it doesn't fund, the rod licence money does not fund wider water quality investigation work and enforcement around that, around water companies. Your rod licence income money does not get ploughed into that. That is funded by the government. Um, a lot of people think, oh, you know, we've heard it say, well, what does my rod license get me? Why should I go fishing when the rivers are so polluted? It is a, it's a, it's a, tif it's a difficult question, and it's something I don't really want to. We want to, don't want to be um, step aside from it. But it's important to get across that your rod license money doesn't fund that work. It's government money. Um, so just to go on a little bit about, you know, to widen into the what actually does your rod license get you? So. I haven't got the figures for 22, 23 yet because we've just come to the year financial end. So I'm going to talk about the previous year, 21 to 22. So in that year, we sold nigh on 940,000 licenses and raised almost 22 million in income. So with, with this, we were able to do all those things to talk about. So I'm just going to go talk a bit more in detail with numbers around that. Um, so one of the things that a lot of people, all, you know, anglers, like to see and perhaps in this we might get questions about it don't see so much is the whole enforcement side of things i mean a lot of money rod license money is spent on the enforcement that's not just people out there checking licenses there's a whole industry which goes around that whether it's around fish theft this and that health checks and the like but within the year 21 22 that money helped um, finance almost forty two thousand fishing license checks over uh, uh, almost £115,000 in penalties issued to those that are caught without a licence. And we also do a lot of work with um, our, the voluntary bailiff service, which is run by the Angling Trust as well. And again, that's rod licence money which funds that. So it's really important. And, um, you know, I think there'll probably be there uh, people on the call out and they go, oh, never see, a, never see a bailiff. Yeah, there is a lot around that. I mean, we can talk about numbers and that maybe later, but we, you know, we don't have hundreds and hundreds of bailiffs out there. And as you can imagine, the amount of water that they have to cover. So if you're fishing in a very remote spot, you're very unlikely to see a bailiff, basically because, you know, it's not really worth, it doesn't make sense to walk miles and miles to check one license. We need to try and go to those places where more people are fishing to make sure that the majority have got a license. Yeah, it's a difficult one, but, you know, that's the way we are at the moment. So the, the money is so important from the enforcement side of things. Um, incident wise, I said we have an incident response. Um, you know, I think there's one thing we really pride ourselves doing well is providing that first call of fisheries incidents. So hopefully most of you will know the um, hotline number 0800 80 70 60. Of course, when people see fish in distress or pollution incidents, they can phone up that number. Um, last year, we attended 317 fishery incidents across the country. As you'd expect, most of these take place, a lot of them in the summer when um, you get high temperatures and fish may get in distress due to oxygen problems and algal blooms. Um, so we're out there, we've got area teams go out there, deploy aeration, um, maybe try and take fish sample health checks to try and find out what's gone wrong. But it is an important service and we'd like to think, you know, that when people phone up seeing fish in distress, that we can be out there within hours, depending on the severity of the problem. Um, we do lots and lots of fishery surveys. Um, you might say, what's the point of that? Um, the thing is, if you don't measure it, you can't, um, if you don't monitor it, you can't manage it. So we do lots of fish stock surveys in rivers, still waters to try and get an idea of fish populations. We have a, like a routine monitoring program 
where we go and do rivers year in, year out. And we also have what we call a discretionary programme where a club might phone up, say, my section of river seems to be underperforming or we're worried about catches in our still water. And we will go out and survey those and try and sort of look at the problems and try and come up with remedies and ideas of why things aren't happening. But as again, the licensing income is important to driving that forward service. And again, if we can't monitor things, we can't understand particularly how well fisheries are performing. So it's important to stress that that is a really important part of the license money, which goes into monitoring. Um, one that probably you know, strikes a chord with most anglers' hearts is that we stock a lot of fish. So you will probably know of our fish farm at Cowerton in Nottinghamshire. The guys up there do an amazing job and 21 22 they put put over 600,000 coarse fish back into rivers and still waters the calvinton is primarily there uh, as a place uh, sort of to help restock um, rivers and still waters that suffer from pollution uh, problems or things like that but of course they do go and stock fisheries which are underperforming as a result of various matters of course we'll try and look into that we don't throw good at bad but I'd say it, it's a massive service and, you know, people really see the benefits. And, yeah, I, I think there's nothing better that anglers like to see a fish going into their particular section of whether it's a still water river. And rod license money is so important in generating that, you know, take the rod license money away. That service wouldn't be there. Um, not people, not a lot of people might know about our fisheries laboratory, which is in Brampton and Cambridgeshire. But again, the fishing license income funds that they do a lot of work behind the scenes, which is so important to the health and status of a lot of fisheries. You know, people get fish killed, obviously distressing, but we can get fish uh, mortality um, samples and investigate why those fish kills happen. We do health checks where people are looking to move fish from one fishery to other to make sure there's you know no real nasties within that. Uh, fish which are being moved again so important to maintain the health uh, of your fishery and keep it sustainable so there's a huge amount of work they do and we've got some of the top fishery scientists in the country working there again it's all the license money which funds that um again other things which real you know customer facing benefits which people see is doing habitat improvement projects you know uh, fisheries projects on still waters and rivers which provide a real benefit to the customer the person who goes fishing and buys the license so we have our fisheries improvement program and in 21 22 we invested over a million in different projects around the country whether it's on rivers on still waters new angling platforms doing habitat enhancements on rivers fish passes all manner of things but you know it's basically there to provide more angling opportunities and you know help promote fisheries generally through the investment of fisheries um, rod license income again also we do a lot of work with partners and within the economic side of things giving rod license money to partners is, is a way of maximizing that income because they will bring in their own funding as well so it, it makes the rod license money work harder and you'll see from the graphic there all the different institutions um, organizations like the angling trust that are hosting us tonight that we work with and again we do huge amounts of work with them and it, it makes that money work harder you know some of the gearing that some of these institutions bring in you know, can sometimes double, treble the original one pound of rod license money we put into. And for that, you can see down the side all the sort of things we're doing with that, whether it's running 1700 angling events, introducing 27,000 people to fishing, um, providing that response to cormorant predation, which the angling, um, angling trust do to incredible effect, and do lots of different things like surveys. Also, we put 400,000 of fishing license income through the Get Fishing Fund and the Angling Improvement Fund, two funds administered by the Angling Trust, which again go directly to customers out there on the bank, making hopefully a real difference. So you can see by working in partnership, and again, we, we, we couldn't do this all on our own, so we, it's key with these partners. And again, that's rod license income, which is really key in you know levering out some more money to actually drive forward these benefits. Um, so, Second question, you know, probably things where people go, oh, rod license going up. So what, what, why is it going up? So recently we, we've done a lot of work within our own service. And I think in some areas it, we're beginning to feel that we're actually, and it sounds quite a grandiose statement, they're failing to deliver against our statutory duty. And just a reminder, which I put up in one of the first slides, that is maintain, develop and improve fresh, fresh water fisheries and uh, provide that service for our fishing licensed customers. And some will go, yeah, it's fine, but others will go, oh, it's terrible, I don't do this and that. And I think we're really, you know, we really felt that looking and 
internally with all the you know the services we provide from area level that we're perhaps not providing that um you know and, and why is this so there's a number of things and i'm not going to hide behind that i mean of course we know inflation's running hot at the moment it has done for a couple of years and of course as money goes up it makes you know it makes more the money you have in your pocket left um i'm, I'm not here to bash the government but we used to get so granting aid, we get a small, at the moment, we get about just over a million pound granting aid. So that's money from the government, which goes into fishing. 2010, we used to get roughly about 12 million. And you can see it's a 90% reduction and not even take into account of inflation. If that 12 million was still there, we would be obviously quids in. I mean, this is not, this is not just fishing. You know, this is the way that the government obviously funding and reductions through certain things have happened. So it's not just the, um, fishing where it's happened. So we're having to deal with that as well. Um, and with that, I talked about this mercenary approach of keeping people fishing, getting them fishing, because it plows money into that. We've seen a, a angling participation rates have declined. We've seen about a, a um, a decrease in about a third of license sales since 2010 and what's this all meant we've probably got half the number of staff fishery staff actually out there on the ground doing stuff for fishing license customers that we did in 2010 this is not an excuse session sort of thing but it's you know trying to paint the picture of why we've looked at it and you know make that hard decision why we need to put the prices up so we've done that to actually you know hopefully provide that improve the service which i've just talked about there all the things that your rod license money delivers to actually try and you know get that service back up and running to the sort of service that we think the customers should expect and deserve just a bit of a graphic there um it shows you how uh, rod license income and sales have declined the high point in the zenith was 2010 and since then we've been on a sort of steady downward trajectory like i said we've probably lost a third in sales You'll see the blip there of 2021, which was COVID, when um, fishing was one of the first things allowed to um, take place after society reopened in the, the May of 2020. And funny enough, all of a sudden people went fishing again. It, it's disappointing to think that we're now back on that downward trajectory. I, I could do a whole talk about the effect of COVID on fishing and fishing participation, but it, it's generally we think society's gone back to more of a normal standing time is an issue for so many people so many people furloughed and this and that we, we think that so many of them have found the time to go fishing so it's disappointing to see we're back on that downward trajectory but again we need to put the, the prices up just a bit to give us that boost to carry on providing that service that we really think that the customer deserves. So just a few things on there. The rod licenses have now come into effect from 2023. Um, this is going to be an incremental increase over the next three years. So as you see there the annual, I've just talked about one license type, you'll know we've got many, um, but the, the most populous uh, license, the annual course of mig migration trout is going up to £33 this year. And then by the end of, uh, by the beginning of 25, it'll be up to £36.80. We're also raising the senior concession from 65 to 66, um, probably not popular, but this is in line with state and retirement age. Um, so following the government's lead on that. Um, so what is all this going to be spent on? Um, there's a huge amount of things. I'll, I'll just put all these up for you to look at and read through as I go through. But the main thing is, is we want to put the key of that is protecting that operational front line. All those things I talked about on those slides about, you know, a million pound for the fisheries improvement program, monitoring, enforcement. They're the things we need to plow the money back in to stop the rot, basically. And, you know, hopefully in some areas, see more allocations and get more staff, particularly for fisheries enforcement. Uh, and we're looking to bring in a specialist enforcement team on national operations and also put more resilience back into the National Fisheries Laboratory. Importantly, the new income, the, hopefully the rise in income that we'll get from the, the uh, rod license increases, we'll see more fisheries projects delivered, more going into angling participation and again that partnership working. And perhaps some of the le less sexy stuff, which really does make it important, is investing in efficiencies um, around rod license stuff. So. Jenny's going to come on and talk about the um, rod license service as well. But things like new payment methods, digital licensing, all this is actually, it's not there just, I mean, yes, it will make things simpler, but it will save us money and help stabilise income. And it will be income that we can again plough back in. So keeping the circle and the whole you know thing going of putting that money back into the fisheries service. Um, bit of a contentious slide. I mean, you might have seen in the, the recent angling press that um, Matt Hayes is saying, well, why should people pay for their license when the, the, the rivers are in the state they are? 
hopefully from the point I made earlier that the rod license money it, it doesn't it doesn't go towards um, providing that water quality monitoring side of things. Um, I, I understand how people want to make a point about this, but basically, if people were to buy a rod license, it would just be cutting their nose off to spite their face that we wouldn't be able to plough that money back into all those things that people would expect and enjoy from the income that should ploughed into fisheries. So yeah, why should I buy a license? Um, without getting all too stern and miserable, it's the law, you have to. Um, yeah, I mean, we could do a whole uh, thing on um, enforcement and whether people are out there actually buying licenses. Evasion rates are currently, and they have been for years, around 5%. Some people go, oh, I'm not too sure about that, but we can only monitor about what, you know, the evasion rates and how many people we actually catch of not having a license. But it's the law. and. Um, I just put this up as the last slide and but why should you buy a license because hopefully from this talk you'll see that the license is so fundamental to carrying out all the work which we hope will prove and uh, improve and make fisheries better going forward some of the stats there i'll see on that last slide i talked about but again i just wanted to hopefully give an emphasis and perhaps for those who didn't actually know what the rod license money has been spent on just for these few minutes you've had a better idea and again just the, the thorny issue of why we're looking now to put it up to carry on providing that service and make it better thank you Thank you very much for that, Tom. Really, really interesting stuff. Um, so I see we've had quite a few questions come in already, which is fantastic. So if I'd ask uh, everybody to keep them coming, um, I'm just going to pull up uh, Jenny's slides now as well, and we'll run through that and then go straight into the uh, Q&A session. So I'm here to talk to you tonight um, about our rod license service um, and the changes that we've got coming up in the next few years. Um, I think you'll probably have heard snippets here and there, but I'm hoping to give you a bit more background and explanation as to why we're planning on making these changes. So why the move to less paper? Um, so the key point here is it's absolutely got to be cost reduction. We spend an awful lot on license production. Um, so we're talking hundreds of thousands of broad license income. Um, and actually, we would rather deliver more for angling and fisheries using this money in tandem with trying to keep license prices as low as we can, rather than spending this money on printing of license cards and license issue letters. Um, in conjunction with that, um, clearly reduction in our carbon emissions is, is really important to us. So we're using about 40 tonnes of carbon a year in the I Want to Fish service. Um, we need about 2,000 trees to absorb that amount of carbon annually. Um, and of course, as an organisation, as the Environment Agency, we're committed to achieving carbon net zero by 2030. And it's worth remembering, it's not just about paper, it's about hosting data in data centres which require huge amounts of energy. Um, for example, an email with um, attachments amounts to a third of the carbon produced when sending a letter. So we need to, to think about this and weave this into our carbon reduction plan as well. Think about our digital communications. Um, when we remove um, that kind of license printing element um, of licensing, it's of course simplifying the um, license issue process. It's important to remember here that actually we know that a decent proportion of anglers are not keen on going paperless and, and this is something we're well aware of. Um, a survey we conducted in 2020 revealed that only 28% of 36 to 64 year olds would prefer a digital license. So this is very much something that we've got to keep in our minds. So thinking about the benefits um, that we could get from um, this reduction in, in costs of the hundreds of thousands that at the minute is spent on, on license printing. Um, so we've looked at what we could potentially deliver with our partners if, for example, 70% of anglers opt for a digital license. Um, we would have significant uh, money which we could channel into fisheries and angling rather than through the license production process. Um, so if we're thinking that broad license income is matched by funding from our partner organisations as usual, 
So with the money saved from printing, we could um, implement 60 more habitat improvement projects, like on this reach, which has been canalized previously, adding features like this improves habitat, ensuring better conditions for fish. Um, 120 more access improvement projects. Um, we think that everybody should have the opportunity to go fishing. Um, and we work in close partnership with the Angling Trust to ensure new facilities can be provided for anglers and make fisheries more accessible. Or uh, we could provide 90 more anti-predation projects. Um, so many of the projects are completed annually with the objective of protecting fisheries from predation by otters and cormorants. Um, so we could deliver many more of those. Or uh, we could support 100 more clubs or fisheries with aeration equipment. Um, so we know in periods of prolonged dry weather, um, it can be very problematic for um, for fisheries, um, for fisheries owners, for anglers. Um, so providing vital aeration equipment can really relieve that pressure and keep a fisher, fishery healthier um, in, in that dry season. Um, or we could work with the Angling Trust in supporting 200 more clubs um, or fisheries to put on a program of events. So one of our main objectives is to get more people fishing and we would do this through campaigns um, that the Angling Trust run for us, like Get Hooked on Fishing and Get Fishing for Wellbeing and Fishing as One. Um, so if we weren't printing the licenses as we are now, that's certainly somewhere the money could go. Um, and I think this is the last one. Um, so instead of printing licenses as they are, we could um, implement 20 more fish and eel passes. So like this one, which is on the River Air in Leeds. Uh, it's funded through National Lottery Heritage and Rod Licence Income. So it allows fish like brown trout to reach spawning, nursery and feeding habitats further up the catchment. Um, and also, uh, we can't forget about fisheries enforcement. That's also one of our jobs. So with the money saved, we could check 25,000 more licences on the bank side. Um, in 2021-22, we prosecuted 20, 726 anglers for fishing without a licence um, with an average fine of £274. So anything that we can do to re reduce evasion, ensure more anglers are buying licences and get those figures down, that's all for the, the better. So I suppose then it comes back to the licence that we're all used to at the minute with these um, amazing David Miller illustrations. Um, we've been printing these fantastic licenses for years now. We know how popular they are and we know that anglers collect them and certainly within the Environment Agency we love them too. But I think the question is, is it worth it? Um, and personally I would prefer to see much more of the work to improve our fisheries and make angling better and getting more people to take up the sport um, than carry on printing these license cards. It's certainly something that we, you know, we can't do both sadly. So a little bit about um, our digital license offering at the minute. So anglers have been able to opt for a digital license since um, early in 2021. Um, short term and junior licenses have been digital for many years now. Um, at the minute, we've got about 30% of anglers choosing um, a digital license whenever they proceed through our online journey. Um, and overall, um, we sold about 800,000 digital licenses since that point in 2021. Um, we don't feel it's enough and we would like to see more anglers opting for digital licenses and ensuring that only those who really require them are opting for a paper license, which we know costs significantly more. So we certainly listen to what anglers are, are telling us about the service and you can see here that over the years we've implemented various features to make um, license buying and issuing much easier um, and in 2022 you can see that we've got our highest um, satisfaction levels yet um, which is certainly heartwarming for for us and, and our service team. Um, and also you can see some of the comments that we've had around the edge here about digital licenses. 
Um, so it makes things a lot easier than going to the post office and better being sent by email rather than the card. Um, getting a license by email is fast and easy. I like it this way. Um, easy to follow the website, really handy that you offer the license by email. Uh, this is the first time I use the text license as opposed to receiving a card. The service is very slick. Um, so these are some um, really positive comments that we've been seeing coming through, which is great. Um, we've also completed a round of user research um, in March of this year, and we spoke to anglers over the telephone for those that aren't particularly tech savvy and also sent out an email survey for those who are. And we got some um, excellent feedback that way as well. So some anglers saying it's better for the environment and now I never go fishing without my phone. It's convenient, um, it's inevitable, someone said. Um, it's an easy option, less bits in my pocket. Even though I'm not very good at this modern technology being from a generation that was not brought up with it, it's far easier. Um, and also, interestingly, one angler said, I always have my phone, but sometimes I leave my wallet at home, which is actually my experience as well. I, I don't always have my wallet with me, but I will have my phone. So it's clearly not all good. And I alluded to earlier that we know that a decent proportion of anglers are not keen on digital licensing. Um, so clearly we need to listen to that feedback too, and we do. Um, some comments that we've had through from the user research um, from last month. So I've fallen in lakes and rivers a few times and lost my phone. So I prefer to have a card with me and show it when I need it. Um, I don't trust technology. Digital signal is not always available. I like the artwork on the paper license. I forget to charge my phone regularly. If it's raining when I'm fishing, my phone work, won't work. Um, I would never choose a digital license because I like the paper collection. So you can see some of the, the, the anxieties um, that are coming um, from anglers whenever it comes to digital licensing, and we certainly recognize those. Um, so we know that some anglers do not feel they can rely on their own technology. Um, some don't feel confident they can access their digital license on their phone because of signal issues. Um, some anglers simply don't have the skills, access or confidence to choose or store a digital license. And some anglers might feel anxious that they wouldn't be able to present their license to an enforcement officer that easily. Um, so it's really important for us because part of our service and vision is, is that we want anglers to know they are licensed and to be able to relax and enjoy fishing. Um, so that's, that's ultimately our end. So we've got to be really careful um, that we're meeting user needs here and we're not leaving anyone behind whenever we implement these service changes. So I think the key thing to take away here is that we're not going to be removing paper licenses anytime soon. Uh, we know it's not right for um, a certain group of anglers, um, but we will be making some changes that we, as we go forward to, to recognize those savings and to enable us to direct that money elsewhere. So from June 2024, licenses will look quite different and we won't be carrying the David Miller image on license cards anymore. But we will ensure that all the key information required for an angler and for an enforcement officer is included on those new license in the new license format. Um, throughout this year, we'll be conducting additional user research to dive into some of those anxieties uh, with digital licenses and also ensure that the new paper version of the license that we will produce will provide everything an angler and an enforcement officer needs and we will build on that and iterate it to make sure it, it fits with anglers and fishing. Um, so what else has changed and, and what's next? So over the last few years, we've been um, introducing various improvements to make buying a license easier for anglers, for example, the buying on behalf of route into the service to make it quicker and clearer for those buying for someone else. Um, and also making sure that the purchase is as quick and simple as possible. Um, and, and that's through our easy renewal mechanism, which is essentially a magic link in your email. You click it, it takes you straight through to your details, which are pre-populated, and then you just have to purchase your license again. Um, Something that we're working on this year is recurring payments um, and hopefully 
we will be releasing that later in the year. Um, and that's really to make sure that you know that you're continuously licensed. You don't have to come back every year, put in your details, put in your card details and purchase your license each year. You know, if, if this is something that you know you're going to be doing for, for years to come. Um, so that's something that um, will be um, quite welcome, I think, um, by anglers, certainly from the feedback that we've been receiving. So we're looking forward to, to releasing that one. Um, and finally, thank you very much for listening. Um, what I really hope you'll take away from this is how much we do talk to and listen to anglers' voices whenever it comes to any service change. Um, and when you do see a service change in place, it will likely have been in front and, and tested with dozens of anglers before it gets to you so that we can, we, we can ensure it's right. Um, introducing digital licenses is certainly divided opinion, but I hope we can ensure the right kind of implementation that doesn't interrupt your enjoyment of what is such an amazing sport. Um, and here's a picture of me fishing whenever I was little with my dad. I think I've just reeled in um, a trout there at the edge of the lake. Um, my dad used to get in a lot of trouble for taking me fishing in my school uniform straight after school um, quite frequently. Um, so this is very much my childhood. I understand angling and I understand um, the passion involved um, and what a fantastic sport it is. Um, if you do want to be involved in user research um, going forward, please do email um, the email address here, so it's iwtf at environment-agency.gov.uk. We'd definitely love to hear from you, um, especially if you would like to help form our fishing license service going forward. So thank you very much.